Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Adobe Extensions tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to get rid of any of the previous set timeouts you may have used when setting up your extensions. Typically, we use a set timeout function to add a little bit of pause uh, before we run some JavaScript code uh, while we're dipping into our JSX scripts to get some information. In this case, we have a script we're evaluating called get file names, which goes into our JavaScript extended file, and then it goes through a folder path and grabs a bunch of names and returns those. But while that's processing, we need to usually wait and use a set timeout to wait, say, 300 milliseconds. And then once we're done waiting, we'll know that we have that array because we've waited a little bit, JavaScript extended has done its thing, and then we go back up to JavaScript. Well, now we can replace this set timeout with something new called a callback, where instead of selecting a certain time period to wait, we can simply uh, only run a function after we've received a result. And the reason we want to do this is because if you have, say, a, a variable number of things that need to be loaded in your extension, like a, a large number of different uh, files in this case, or a small number, you don't want to have to guess how many seconds to wait and then have some users have problems or in different cases causing issues. So what this will force it to do is only run the functions in sequential order after every bit of them has been executed. So everything in this is gonna be basically the same as when you use a set timeout, except obviously we're getting rid of the set timeout and we're gonna be using what's called a callback. And the callback is what's gonna be called after um, something has been run. In our case, the eval script method already has a callback argument filled into it. So the first thing is the script that needs to be run. That's the first argument for eval script. The second is our callback. And our callback in this case is gonna be an entire function which generates the UI. So basically what this is saying is the JavaScript is going to go in to execute some JavaScript extended code and then once it's done executing that code using the callback we're going to run another JavaScript function afterwards. So essentially JavaScript JavaScript extended, and then JavaScript. That was a lengthy introduction explanation, but let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial and everything. If you guys aren't already following the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And also down in the description, you can download the extension testing bare bones extension code on GitHub to get started and follow along. And down there as well, you can follow us on Instagram. And of course, don't forget to join the Discord server and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and even contribute now tutorial ideas. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my own GitHub and just get these extension testing files. And I'm going to simply overwrite the files that I have now. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and overwrite the JavaScript and I'll overwrite the HTML. And in here, I'm going to strip out everything except for the JSON inside of my script file. So now if we save everything and launch the extension, which I have linked to a shortcut, you can see we're just getting our empty extension testing UI. Now what we're going to do is quickly code an extension we've similarly made before, and you'll be able to get an idea for how quickly we can actually code extensions. And all we're going to be doing is taking a look at a folder, uh, and we're going to get all the list of files within that folder. So we're just going to provide it with a folder. It's going to go into the JavaScript extended, and instead of using a set timeout, we're going to use the callback feature uh, to sequentially order the JavaScript, JavaScript extended, and then JavaScript code after that. So the first thing I'm going to do is inside of my initial sort of anonymous function running here in my JavaScript, we need to go ahead and start loading everything. So in order to interact with uh, JavaScript extended, we need a new CS interface. So we'll go ahead and define a new one here, and this needs to be capitalized. And now we need a variable to store all of the file names, so I'll just say file names is equal to an empty array. And then we need to go ahead and go into our JavaScript extended. So we're gonna say CS interface dot eval script. Now the first argument for eval script is gonna be the function name inside of our JavaScript extended file. So we'll go ahead and define our function and just call it get file names. And we're gonna provide it with a path uh, that, which we're gonna use as the folder. So we're just gonna say get file names. And the argument in order to get in our previously defined path variable here, we're just going to exit out with single quotes and add our path. And we also need to make sure it's a string. So I'm going to put double quotes. 
Now, if I load up the csinterface.js file and type in eval script, we can see that the first argument is indeed a script to run or a script uh, function and then a callback. If we provide a null callback, it's just going to return its own result. But if not, it's going to use the callback after it runs the script. This is super nifty and is going to save us a lot of headache in the future. So for the second argument, we're going to define our callback, which we're going to make a function. That way, the callback or the thing it does after it runs this script is a function itself. And real quickly inside of our JavaScript extended, let's go ahead and define this. So we need to go ahead and alert our path. I need to see what it is and we'll go ahead and run it. So it's taking us to the extension folder itself. Let's go ahead and I believe I have a folder already inside of there. Inside of presets, I hear I have a whole bunch of JSX files. So we're going to go ahead and grab inside of our JavaScript extended file. We're gonna define a folder called path the path to our extension and we're going to add the presets folder and then we're going to create a variable called files and say look at this folder our presets folder and get all of the files inside of it now if you alert files and we run it you can see we're going to get this giant list of files which is perfect this is a large data set and we don't want to just guess how many seconds to wait in our javascript we want to do it after it's loaded so now we're just going to go ahead and return our files, but we're going to convert it to JSON and stringify it because right now it's an array and we just want to send it back as a string to make it easy. And then inside of here, we're going to parse it back into an array. So our script is basically done. All we needed to do with that was go in and get the files. And now we can go ahead and go back here and fill up our file names. So now what I'm actually going to do is take our script evaluation and create a new function with it. I'm going to call it function get file names. That's the name of it in the JavaScript extended. So we're just going to call it get file names JS. Then we'll paste our CS interface. So inside of here is when we're going to call this. And then up here in our main code, we'll say get file names JS. And I want to give this the path because we need the path to go in here. So we'll have path as an argument. And then I also want to give it the callback. So I'll say callback. And for the callback, what I'm going to do is simply define a new function. And now basically what this callback is going to do is contain our file names. So basically what it's saying is it's is run this get file names JS function use our path to our extension and this anonymous function to run afterward. So what is the function we're going to run afterward? We're going to go ahead and generate buttons. And this is gonna be a thing inside of JavaScript here we define. So I'll say function generate buttons. And inside of here, we're going to need the names of all of our buttons and we're going to use our file names. So we'll take our file names from our callback function and send it into generate button. So like I said earlier, we're going JavaScript, JavaScript extended, JavaScript. First JavaScript, get file name JavaScript. That's our first JavaScript function, which takes us into a JavaScript extended function. And that is going to then have a callback, which is another JavaScript function. The callback, the way we're gonna run that, we're gonna create a variable called result, or you can call it value, whatever you want. And we're gonna parse whatever our res, uh, result of this function here is. So then we're going to call back our result. And all this is saying is basically this callback variable is now gonna be equal to our generate buttons function. It's linked because this second argument here is just this whole bit of code, which means run generate buttons with our file names variable. So then down here, after it's done running our JavaScript extended file and getting all these file names, it's going to say, hey, we just got the result from JavaScript. Here it is, it's called result. And then we're going to pass result as the argument for our callback. Our callback is this function and we're passing result, which is our array, into file names. So it's a little bit tricky, but the relationship is intertwined in a way that makes this work perfectly. So just to test it inside of generate buttons, I'm going to alert my names and let's see if we're getting the information we need. So as you can see, we're getting an array full of objects. 
And what I actually need is the names from our JavaScript uh, extended file. So instead of get files afterward, I need to make a new array and just get all the names. So I'll say var names is equal to an empty array. And I'm gonna iterate through uh, from zero to our files.length. And I'm gonna say names.push files i dot name. So get the name of each file. And then I'm gonna replace the weird space string you sometimes get with a nothing. So now we go ahead and run this. We're still getting the objects because we're returning the files and not the names. So now we're gonna get a whole list of all of our names. We can now just generate our UI inside of this function. So we'll create a variable called button and also create a variable called, uh, I believe it's our preview section. So I'll go ahead and say preview section is equal to our document dot get element by ID preview section. And then we're going to loop through our names here. And for each time, we're going to set button equal to our document dot create element. We're going to create a button. Uh, our button, we're going to set the attribute for class as a button. And then we'll set the attribute for the ID to be whatever I is. And then we'll grab the inner HTML of the button and set it equal to the current name. And then lastly, we need to add this element. So we'll grab our preview section and append a child and it will be our button. So now let's go ahead and run this. And you can see we're not getting anything yet. One thing I'm gonna do real quick is delete this button, but we should be generating our things. And I think the reason why is we're not getting the valid uh, type of data. If, let's go ahead and alert names again. It looked proper, but I'm gonna also alert names zero. I think it's coming in as a string rather than an array. So if I go ahead and save and run this, I'm going to get my whole thing here. And the first value appears to be a name. And I think I just had an error because now it's actually loading. So let's go ahead and just test it one more time without the alerts, save it and run it. Awesome, now all we need to do is a little bit of uh, CSS to make it look a little bit nicer. Uh, if we go into our styles.css, I actually already have the style set up a little bit here. Instead of main div, it's called the preview section. And I have all these settings already for the buttons. So they are now centered. So this is gonna load all the files in your folder, no matter how many they are, and you don't have to put in a set timeout to guess how long for your JavaScript to wait for an asynchronous return. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and understood it because it's a very useful thing to help uh, improve a lot of your projects if you've already used the set timeout method uh, with an extension. If you liked the video, hit the like button, down below hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can download the extension testing uh, bare bones code to try this out for yourself and also down there you can follow us on instagram of course check out the discord server get help with scripting extensions plugins expressions and much more and contribute tutorial ideas you'd like to see there as well thanks again for watching everyone we'll see you next time